Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you for stopping in. Um, this video here, we are going to get back on this 55 commercial Johnson. Um, and we've got a lot that we need to get done to this thing. Um, it just uh, had a lot of kind of weird things going on up under the cowling. Um, a lot of brittle, broken plastic pieces. Um, and so we replaced most of that and we're going to get back on this thing and find out what kind of other weird gremlins uh, it's got in store for us. Um, I know there's something going on in a recoil starter. We'll look at that. Um, and just a whole lot of things that it had going on to it that we need to address and get taken care of. So what do you say we get back on it? Okay, the first thing we're going to have to do on this victim, this is a 55 commercial Johnson Seahorse. But when I pull the recoil, I get no uh, engagement. So I loosen the bolts somewhat. And we will see if we can figure out what's going on in that thing. Might just be stuck. Well, it would help if I put the right size a socket on there. But there don't something seem right. Um, this right here. Let me make sure you're in there. Where the dog paw that thing's all kitty warm you see that so something's loose in there and what it did when i tried to pull it earlier it jammed somewhere i mean it's working okay right now and then the flywheel yeah but something just seems all so i'm gonna take that off i'm gonna take it apart if that's the right size so yeah sure I don't remember if there is. Yeah, there is a nut. I don't know if that's going to spin or what. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> so, let me. Okay, Ooh, see, there's a spring there. Is that thing off or not? Yeah. Big washer. That went about like that. Okay, that was hooked to right there. But why is it all wobbly like that? I wonder if it's. I think I got some more of these I've salvaged. Um, there's the little. I think they call them compression washers, something like that. Oh wait a minute, what's that thing? Is that just a little rubber bumper? Or something broke there? Well, I might have to go look at the old pot layout on this thing. Well, that's kind of glued in there, so that's just a bumper for when it comes forward, I think. There's the... Oh, I ain't seeing nothing obviously broke. Compression washers. But something sure ain't right. It's almost like there's a, is that a bushing maybe? Oh, now there's the first broke thing I've seen. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. That probably is part of a bushing. But I'm not sure. But 
that sure is what it seems like. Seems like, yeah, there's a bushing broken there or something. Oh, there it went. <laughs> okay. And that's what it is, just a little bushing that was causing some slop. I think that's a part of the bushing. I'm sure it is if it's plastic. Yeah, that's part of it. So this outboard's... It's just weird that I'm finding all this plastic nylon stuff broken and everything. I'm going to hose this out with a little bit of this, just a little. There's my knot. I think it was just this bushing. So now I'm going to have to go get another bushing. But you know what? Look at how this is all... That's all scored up there, where them washers went. Do my little rag, little rag. Yeah, that's all scored up in there. I don't think it's... You know, I don't think it's going to stop it from working, but... I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but the top right there where the bushing would be is kind of just all scored up. But the bushing, you know, it has a rim, kind of like a rimmed rifle cartridge or something that should sit on that. Then I've got, I guess I could put more of these compression washers if I needed. I'm sure I got some around here. But that, that's what it is. So let me go get the bushing and maybe a compressionist washer or two and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I went over and looked at the uh, at the uh, parts schematic breakdown on this thing and it shows then I went and got me a, a new bushing and it shows the bushing goes in Then, ooh, what do I do with it? Then it, whoops, it shows the washer, then the paw. Of course, I'm looking at that parts diagram. It shows it coming up from the bottom. But it showed the bushing, then the washer, then the paw. So that's how I'm going to do it. And, and you can see, hopefully, there is a little, once I push down with this on top of there, there's some spring in that. And that should really tighten that up, I'm hoping. And now all i got to do is figure out how... So the paw, this should have been... And i got that spring. you got to hook up this spring right here. It goes there, and it goes to this plate here. And the way I like to do it is bump that up against that and then put it in place then the washer and that goes through I don't know if I can screw that thing down or not I'm gonna try so, about like that then we got this nut that goes on the other side which we'll see if we can at least start that I think we can Get my old fat fainers in there. Okay. Some more of this. And then some more of that. That should be good enough. Now, if I got that right, let me see. Yeah, she definitely tighter. You know, sloppy like it was. And when it's out to catch the starter, as the engine kicks over, it would knock that back down, I believe. So, let me splay, splay it with some yummy in there. Can't hurt. And then I'm going to go put this recoil back on and we'll see what we got. Be right back. 
Well, I took uh, this 3 8 screw that goes right here to the cable from the tiller and as you can see after I undid that there's nothing wrong with the cable it moves in and out just fine and that's a relief because those cables are getting hard to come by and they're expensive but then I noticed it, um, a couple of different things where it was stuck was right here this big bolt that goes here it's a shoulder you know bolt bolt that allows it there's a you can see the bushing there that bushing was black and just this was quite dirty I've cleaned it up sprayed some intake cleaner on it and I'm gonna put some uh, lube repaint 105 on it but that's where it was stuck was right here on this bolt and uh, there's a couple washers that go on the back side of it and so forth but yeah it was stuck there and then um, I noticed a couple other things right here where it goes back and forth on this to move that the whole linkage there's supposed to be a bushing there just like this one if you can see this bushing right here so we'll put and if you can also look at the condition of this bushing it's all busted and cracked um, hopefully you can see that go the other way Dan see all them cracks in there hopefully it's focusing but yeah it's all deteriorated too and there's supposed to be another bushing like that right here and uh, as I got to taking things apart there um, basically right in here there's what I found for that bushing just just chunks of it stuck there with hard grease but it's just completely deteriorated so I'll get that all cleaned up and uh, then once I do I'll take this, I think it's 5 8 inch bolt, put some Luber Plate 105, that bushing looks okay there. I'll replace that bushing, I'll replace that bushing, and uh, hopefully that'll take care of this throttle issue. Then I've got to get in here and undo this primer and find out if the plastic's broke or if it's just a, a, a bad hose or nipple or whatever. But it was leaking gas through there so when i would try and squeeze it up so let me go find these bushings and everything and i'll be back okay i went around out there and dug in my conics and i got a new bushing right here and you can see the marks here are perfectly lined up when i come to all the way back they're lined up and i'll put a new bushing in here you really can't see this one because it's black but uh now the throttle is all loosey-goosey, feel good, so that'll work there, but found some other stuff we got, well I gotta address this primer yet, so let me get those two bolts, it's just two bolts, I think they're 7 sixteenths, what they look like, and we'll flip this over and see if it's busted, I'll be right back. Oh, don't you just love the plastic stuff? All right. There's actually three bolts you have to take out. You have to take out this guy here, too, that goes right there to keep the uh, choke lever that you pull in and out. That keeps that in place. And then this L-shaped piece stabs into the primer. But as you can see, I took it off. And you can see right there the wonderful plastic piece. Hopefully, you can see right down in there. 
See there? There it is. That's the plastic piece right there. Right in there is nice and broke off. So that's why the gas was shooting out from under there. So let me go look and see if I can find another primer. Oops. Right there she is. Somewhere. Right there. Broke it did. Good old plastic. Yeehaw. Okay, so I got this old broken primer. The one with the broken nipple off of there. I put the new one in there. You can see the pretty blue fuel hose I got. Tigon hose coming around. I just put that there because it fit good and it's pretty. Um, and now I've got grease all over, some lubricate all over my throttle. That's looking good. Righty. Well, I've still got the electric starter hooked up here, but I'm going to go ahead and try this recoil. Um, I primed it. The primer's no longer leaking. So let me start this sucker. It might help a little.
Johnson 55 commercial seahorse but certainly a workhorse Playful little sea otter. There's the old one, and that's where I'll put the other one. irks me you know let me take the time to make this aluminum bracket and they did have to drill some holes and round the corners and you know you know you know on this beautiful American made aluminum kicker bracket and then use non-stainless to bolt it on. That don't even make a no sense. So I'm gonna keep wire wheeling, see if I can get most of this flaky flaky paint off here. And I'll hang on to this, put it in my metals pile, but I won't put it back on here right now for my little 3.3 .3 Evan Rude Hong Kong made kicker this is plenty white so I used it yes I'll be back now what I'm gonna have to do is take mr. Diablo and get rid of this handle I'm gonna cut that weld off cut that weld off and then I'm going to have to cut an area in this aluminum where I can reach my hand down there and trigger the lever on that bracket. It won't work like this. This was added after the, after the uh, handle was on there. And so that handle's just in my way. I've owned this boat for years and never used that handle for anything. It has already lifting points on it the boat 
right here, these big, it's got one of those on each side. And then it also has a lifting point here, tow point and all that. So I don't see where I'll ever need that handle. Plus the kicker is always in the way. So I'm going to whack it off. Get rid of it. With Mr. Diablo. Okay, you see here's the nuts and bolts I want to use for mounting my kicker bracket. This is my magnet. No stick them up. No pick them up. That's what we use. Not these here. You see. Hit it. Stick them up. We don't want this. We want that. Lock washer. Nut. Who are you calling a nut? Somebody. Somebody must be. she is all mounted on there I got nice stainless hardware um, so if I was in the boat I would reach and grab the back pull up a little bit pull that lever and let down and then this would lock it into place and uh, this motor is a short shaft but I have a Yamaha I think it's a four horse that is a long shaft. But I think this will be long enough actually. 
because this boat with all the weight in the back including this it squats down a good two three inches so I think for getting back and everything I think it'll work fine and then to bring it up I'll just reach in push down on that push down on that and pull up and then this guy will tilt up the one thing I don't like is there's no locking device that I can see on this this thing it's just friction from that nut but and that's as far as it tilts up which should be enough I would think but we just have to try it on the water but uh, I might try my Yamaha on here as well just to see how it it goes but I got the bracket all painted up pretty got that old junker off there and this this is pretty good this is pretty good so there it is that old Johnson 55 commercial all squared away um, I don't think I put it on film but I did uh, pull off the prop grease up the prop shaft drain the lower unit and put new fresh lower unit oil in it. so that Johnson 55 commercial is ready to get to work um, I couldn't tell the exact year of it because the little plate on the side is either well painted over because I I took some intake cleaner sprayed on it and a little brass wire brush and tried to see if the numbers would show or whatever but I think that is just a like a bossing where a sticker that had the year manufacture date and all that and I didn't even pull off the bonnet to look see if it had a Welch plug after I put the bonnet back on so I had to guess I'd say it's about an 88 should be able to look it up just by that uh, gold top bonnet it's got on there but anyway she is a good runner a little bit of a little strange little weird things the two male uh, <laughs> kill switch connector don't know how that was gonna work but uh, we got that straightened out and then a uh, lot of plastic under there um, from the recoil to the linkage, it just crumbly. Uh, I, I don't know. And it's weird because the the engine, the power head, the, it, it don't look overly salty. Um, and I saw no signs of overheat anywhere, so I'm guessing just age or maybe somebody squirted something on there that that nylon plastic didn't like. But uh, several of the bushings and everything were all just crumbly and deteriorating. And like I said, even up under the recoil, it was that way. So we got that all straightened out, and she is ready to go. But guess what's in here? It came in the mail. I'll give you a hint. If you remember when we did this to Hatsu, goes on tight. I did everything but the lower on it. And uh, so I finally got me a water pump impeller. It's got eight fins on it. 
and it's got the nylon uh, center. But so that will be in probably in my next video or there soon about. But I got the water pump so I can get a new water pump in this one. It pumps fine. You understand? But um, I want to drop that and change the lower unit oil. I didn't bother changing it when we did the little three-part series on the Tahatsu because I knew I was going to do this. Anyway, so we got us a water pump impeller for a Tahatsu and that's what we're going to get, um, get to doing here soon. And I got some hunting guides coming over by the 5th of October. I think I've got like four of their engines two different guides, two different engines. And uh, so we're gonna get on those. And then I've got some of my own I've been wanting to get to. And every time I threaten to do that, I end up getting some engines in for repair. So we'll get on those. Uh, but as always, you never ever know what's gonna pop into this little shop. So, Get a little long on this one. That's going to be a wrap on this one. I want to thank you for watching. One more hack from Kodiak. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.